Hi there, my name is Candace, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there. It's been a while since I've recorded a video, so sorry if this is a tad rusty and I speak slower than I should. Feel free to put this at 1.5 speed. But cutting to the chase, today I am doing a book review of Breathless by Amy McCulloch. Um, right now my cat Sir Clive is sniffing around the camera, so hopefully he does not knock it over. Anyway, uh, this is actually my first time getting a book of the month club book. Um, I've actually avoided book of the month for the this. This is the reason why. I, I don't like their branding. I think that it's annoying. I don't like it whenever um, made into a motion picture type of branding is put onto book covers as well. Or the movie poster. I just like the book as is. But uh, this book caught my attention because it is an outdoor adventure slash thriller and I was about to go on a weekend trip in Shenandoah National Park and stay in the mountains. So I was like, how fun would it be to read about a murder on a mountain while on a mountain? Um, so too long didn't listen this book is like it's a solid okay i gave it three out of five stars on goodreads i i could have given it two there's a lot of falls in this book and i i don't want to like sugarcoat that but i do try to find as many things to enjoy about a book as possible because i think that no matter what there's a reader for every book. So I wanna come at this from a positive lens and I did enjoy it for the most part. I did finish it and I do not finish books that I don't like. Um, I will DNF a book so quick and not feel bad about it. The only time that I did not DNF a book that I hated was Around the World in 80 Days. I dislike that book to the nth degree. But anyways, we're here to talk about Breathless, and I'm already out of breath speaking this quickly. Um, so Breathless is about a aspiring adventure journalist named Cecily Wong, who does not care really about being an adventure journalist. She met this guy, James, online, and they started dating, and she kind of took on all of his hobbies, this doesn't super matter, but it does matter for the character development, if that makes sense. Um, so the whole time you're kind of wondering like, girl, why are you doing this? Like, you don't even care about this stuff. And it does kind of work itself out in the end. By the way, this is going to be a no spoiler review. I'm not going to say anything past, a hun past the last hundred pages. So I might give hints to things, I might um, reference some stuff, but it's not going to spoil it because I want you to be able to read and enjoy this and really make your own decision about it before you spend your money on it. Um, reviews are good. Anyway, so she fails to summit this hike and writes this blog article, what have you, that ends up going viral and it's called Failure to Rise, which sounds super interesting. Wish that they would have added that in here because they do have some of her blogs in here that break up the chapters, which I think was really cool. Um, so she has written Failure to Rise and it captures the attention of Charles McVeigh, who is like the mountaineering just wonder boy right now. He is the hottest thing. And he is doing a 14 peaks challenge. If that sounds familiar, I'll talk about it in a bit. But he is doing a 14 peaks challenge where he's trying to get all of the 8,000 er meters. If they say that like multiple times, it's so hard to actually say though. Even my brain has a hard time reading it um, in a year or something like that. I can't remember. But anyways, it's a really big deal and no one, I don't think anyone's ever done it before. So he's trying to do it and he's trying to do it like without the lines and she'll explain what all of that means. Basically, he's trying to do it like the most difficult way possible, like the old mountaineers would have done before all of the Sherpas and the people to help you climb the mountain. So like 
the real way. I don't know. There's a lot of gatekeepiness. Um, not like she's endorsing the gatekeepiness. She's actually speaking out about it. But anyway, um, and there's there he and okay, get your mind straight. So he ends up choosing her to climb the mountain with him. He never gives like one-on-one -on -one interviews. I don't think he gives interviews to journalists at all. And he tells her, if you summit this mountain with me, I will give you like the premier, the one-on-one uh, -on -one interview that everyone is going for. Now her boyfriend, James, he gets super jealous and breaks up with her. So now <laughs> she's broke. She will not have a job unless she gets this interview and writes this story. And she lost her boyfriend, who was kind of a tool anyway. So, like, good riddance on that. But um, she only, like, gets to have her job, really, if she summons this mountain and writes this story. Which is, like, bad in and of itself. And it also kind of speaks to the nature of some of this adventure outdoorsy stuff where it is very class. Um, it is very much so a class thing. Like they, they do speak about how the guy who's like a CEO of a tech firm and he's got all of the best gadgets and then she's there and she's like, I spent my last time on this. Like if I don't summit this, it's nothing. And then you've got the other girl who's an influencer. Um, who is actually like the most likable character of the entire book, which you would think that she would be kind of cringy, but she's not like, she's just out there doing her thing. She's super sweet. She's very helpful to Cecily. Um, but the biggest, so just talking more so about like kind of a summary of the novel, the whole thing, the whole time is that Cecily doesn't know what she's doing. She's an experience. She's a beginner. She probably shouldn't be there anyway. She doesn't really know why she's there. She just needs a job. Hey, and I can kind of get that as someone who has like perused the market and been like, I'll just kind of take anything that is within my scopey wheelhouse. Um, I get that. But it's hard to like ignore that the whole time throughout. So that, hello, Sir Clive. He's into the book, obviously. He's probably going to sit on it. Um, or maybe he'll sit on this other one. I don't know, hey buddy. Okay, back to the book. So let's go with the positives. The most interesting character of the entire book is the mountain itself, Manaslu. And I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Should have probably looked it up first. Anyways, that's how I'm going to pronounce it throughout the video. So the mountain is really incorporated into each and every character, not character, each and every scene, each and every chapter. And it really has the most personality out of all of the other characters, which is a flaw in them. But for someone who loves nature literature, oh my gosh, it was so great. And it wasn't like an overly anthropomorphizy either. So like, it wasn't like she was turning the character into a human or the mountain into a human. It was more so she was reflecting on the mountain as it was in its own right without the humans being there. Like the humans were very much so encroaching on the mountain and its space. And there was a lot of respect for the mountain and for nature. And as a nature lover, um, not just a nature book lover, but a nature lover, I respected the hell out of that. I thought it was very well written. I enjoyed learning about the mountain. So on that note, the reason why she was able to, um, Amy, the author of the book, why she was able to write so well about the mountain is because she's actually summited this peak herself. She was the youngest, I think, Canadian American woman to do it at the time when she did it, uh, which was in 2019. So I don't know if anyone younger than her has done it that yet. I'll talk more on that a little bit actually in the cons. But what that did um, was it gave a lot of wonderful perspective. I think if I wouldn't have even seen that in her bio, I would have known by the level of detail and not like overly detailed. I can understand how some people wouldn't like it. 
but the level of detail that she has like for each evening in the mountain and each morning and the afternoons and the cloudy days and then even just being a beginner learning how to summit learning how to do all of these alpinist techniques and acclimatizing I could see that she took so much care to really get it right. And I don't think that she climbed the mountain just for a story um, in the afterward or acknowledgements. She talks a little bit more about how the story kind of came to its own and she was more so of talked into writing it um, from some of her friends. So it, it, it really did. It, it felt so authentic and that's probably why I loved it so much. Just as a reference, the next book that I'm reading is Becoming Odessa about um, a woman who, it's a memoir about a woman who uh, the first time that she did the Appalachian Trail through hike, and she's actually the fastest person, not fastest woman, but the fastest person to get it done in 46 days. So again, this is like a genre that I'm really into right now, and I highly appreciated that. I thought that once you actually get past about the first 75 to 100 pages, the pace picks up. It's really enticing. You do start to care about the characters. She leaves chapters on cliffhangers, so you're like pulled into the next one, but the chapters aren't so long, so you're okay with like jumping into it. It's not short chapters like Dan Brown, but it, they're like three to five pages typically, not three to five, more like five to seven. So you, you do start to move through it as the pace picks up. It takes a minute to get there. And I think this is a good time to go ahead and jump into the negatives because all those, all those positives, while there were really only three, um, they, they're good enough for me to like say I enjoyed it, I finished it, there you go. So we're already 12 minutes in, let's go ahead and jump into the negatives. So this is Amy, the author. This is this author's first adult novel. There's some issues with that categorization, especially with female authors, I understand that. But as a reader who does not like YA, um, I've tried. There's very few YA books that I actually enjoyed or finished. Um, the only thing in my personal opinion that made this an adult novel and not YA was the fact that all of the characters were adults. Um, I think that you could have taken these characters and made them teenagers in one facet or another and slightly shifted a little bit of the narrative and it would have been a YA novel. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's bad from my perspective since I don't like YA novels and I think a lot of people going into an adult novel expect a certain level of retrospection that wasn't really done in this or a certain level of mature, m more mature themes that weren't as flushed out as well as they could have been. I felt like this was very surface level. We did talk about some of those things um, and some of those themes like the extremes of humanity, survival, not living up to your parents' expectations. Again, like that's a YA theme, um, I think, or society's expectations. It's a very YA theme. Um, again, it's not bad, but it's not an adult novel level, in my opinion. So one of the things that kind of started to bother me a little bit as I was thinking back on this and on that topic specifically is that the there's a lot of younger characters who are in like their early 20s. So you're already venturing on that side and they're all very much so like coming into their own in whatever it is. So again, like you're picking up on why I thought this could have fit as YA. Um, it's almost like coming of age, but for like a 20 something. So you have a lot of the youngest to do this, the youngest to do that. And it made me think of the author as being a youngest to do blank. And I was talking to my husband about this last night. Um, he's in his late thirties. I'm in my early thirties. 
when I was in my early 20s, I could stay up drinking until 4.30 a.m., get up, go to PT, physical training, um, I was in the army for 10 years, and run six miles. Like, your body recovers so much when you're young. As someone who now in their 30s is like, struggling to get off of the couch after a leg day. Like that, that is not that impressive to me because I don't know. I don't know. That's a personal thing. Maybe it's aside from the book, but it felt like a lot of the younger characters were very much so praised for being younger. And even some of the older characters, it was like, yeah, they're old now, but look at what they did when they were younger, which again, some people might be into that and that's completely fine. But it, it, again, for an adult novel, it just, it didn't make a lot of sense. And this is this, uh, I don't know if I already said this, but this is this author's uh, premier adult novel. So their first one. So maybe it'll change, like, you know, habits die hard. And that's completely fine. Again, didn't hate it, but just wanted to put that out there. So speaking on something that I kind of alluded to in the prose, is the mountain is the most multifaceted character. All of the other characters are one-sided. Even Cecily, our main character, she is immature, which is fine. She's immature, she's inexperienced, she is like hero worshiping the crap out of Charles. Like she sees no red flags. And again, as an early 20 something, I can kind of, I can kind of get on board with that. I understand it. But the way that that resolves itself at the end, I'm not a hundred percent sure that she learned. Like we don't actually get to see her go through the learning process. Everything, oh, I won't get to the end part just yet. Um, but I don't feel that we get to see any real growth. Like we know it happens, we're told it happens, but we don't get to see it. So there's a little bit of that show versus tell going on throughout the entire novel. Um, one of the things that kind of broke me up as a reader and kept pulling me out of the storyline in addition to the show versus tell is the use of pronouns. Now, personally, I don't like a lot of pronouns. That is a another just personal um, thing. Preference. Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry, I just yelled at you. The coffee is hitting. So, especially whenever you have female and female characters talking to each other, and you're kind of in this third person, very limited um, storytelling space, Sometimes the he's and the she's get a little bit mixed up and as a reader with ADHD, um, I, I have to go back a lot and double check. So maybe that's my reading comprehension skills. I don't know. But it did get a little bit confusing at times, especially when we were going back and forth using the pronouns between the different characters. And I think it would have been cool to have this in a first person uh, limited viewpoint. So one of the things I'm going to say this as a con because I think a lot of people wouldn't like it, but I want to point it out and just speak about it in general. So I think what the author wanted us to do was to not trust the main character, which is very common. And once you realize that, that, that we aren't meant to totally believe everything that the main character says or we realize that they're inexperienced so we take everything that they say with a grain of salt, then the reading experience is a lot better um, because you're, you're now, you're interacting with the story and with the character a little bit more. And I think that that's where uh, the author wanted us to go with this because we're learning about these other characters from her perspective. So while she is hero worshiping Charles McVeigh, we're meant to question that in a certain sense and be like, hey girl, like that's not cool. Rather than being like, oh my gosh, this author is just, oh, she just keeps talking about how great this one guy is and like he's one-sided. Yes, I still think that he's one-sided, but I think that there are ways that the author could have made us distrust the main character a little bit more. And again, this is where I think we could venture a little bit more from like YA to adult. 
But anyway, uh, we don't really start to actively distrust the main character until she gets higher on the mountain and the author makes it very clear that she is losing mental capabilities due to lack of oxygen. So um, then it's a little bit more obvious and it made me rethink some of the earlier parts of the novel from this character's perspective or that were told from this character's perspective and it made me appreciate it more but it kind of, I had to like I had to retrospect on that if that makes sense so okay lack of oh yeah the so since we're seeing this all from her perspective she just has Cecily the main care I said I didn't like pronouns and now I'm using them uh, the main character, Cecily, has a very limited, like, life experience. And so, since she sees people as one-sided and we're seeing everyone through her lens, everyone is very one-sided. So, it, again, I've seen that as a critique on Goodreads. I agree with it to a certain extent. I think that there are ways that they could have made that the author could have made the other characters more dimensional, but hey, it is what it is. There you go. And let me think, oh, I can't look at my review because it's on there. Uh, let me look at my, I wanna, oh, okay. So I'll go ahead um, so that I can keep this video under 30 minutes, I will go ahead and talk about one of the other cons to this novel. And it's a big one, and it's why a lot of people have DNF'd it. And that's the pacing. It is hard to get into this book. It is hard because it's very repetitive. Um, and I mean, that's kind of like the nature of mountaineering in and of itself. You, you do a lot of the same things over and over again. There's exciting moments, but the majority of hiking or camping, it, it's a lot of repetitive actions, um, in addition to mountaineering. So it, I mean, it's just, it's just survival. So if you're not into that and you're looking for like a straight up thriller that's immediately going to pull you in, that's not really this book. You need to go into it with more endurance. So almost like how if you're going to climb a mountain, you need more endurance. You need the same thing for this book. A hundred pages in, you're going to be good. You're going to be able to work the rest of the way through. But it did take me a week to finish this book. And it's only 330 pages. The chapters are short. The font is large. Um, it, it, it shouldn't have taken me a week. And honestly, I read the last 200 pages within 24 hours. So it's, yeah, the pacing is off. It starts very, very slow. And then you get to the last hundred pages, and this is not going to be a spoiler, but I'm just going to talk about the last hundred pages in more of a general sense, um, just kind of like overviewing the wrap up. Um, first of all, I don't know when the climax was. I don't, I have an idea, but it's not really the best climax. I'm not going to say what it is, again, for spoiler purposes, but kind of hard to identify the climax while I'm looking back because things don't start resolving directly after that things keep building maybe maybe again this the structure of the novel is supposed to look more like the structure of climbing a mountain where you spend so much of your time going up it and then like the way back down is like a day or two I guess I don't know I've never actually climbed a mountain I'm just going off of what the author said in some mountaineering documentaries I've seen excuse me so the last like hundred pages you're thinking to yourself wait like is there gonna be a killer which is actually kind of cool I'm going to say I like how the whole time you're second guessing whether or not there is a murderer on the mountain or if this chick is just crazy so that's fun love that genuinely love that it, it was good to just kind of like keep second guessing um the narrator and again that's i think that was part of the author's intention so i did like that 
But at the same time as a reader, it's like, wait, are we going to get any resolution? Am I going to like the resolution? I don't think you're going to like the resolution. Overall, the outline of the resolution was fine. It was great. Um, however, it happened in a very short space of time, both in actual time, time of the novel and in the number of pages. It happened so quickly, like unbelievably quickly, like conveniently quickly. Um, so I, I don't, I don't love the ending. I don't hate it. I think that the concept of the ending was great. The concept of the ending works out, checks out, makes sense. Execution, not good. Because it happened too fast to the point where I was literally having to try to keep up. Like I had to read back and be like, wait, where are they? Which camp are they actually at? How did they get all the way down to camp two already? Like, who, what's going on? So I was genuinely confused. And then the ending should have had an epilogue. 100% there should have been an epilogue. You're not left with a cliffhanger like you know what happens at the end. You get it. She gives you enough to where you can figure it out on your own. But readers like epilogues. We like to know how things worked out for the characters that we have now invested in. We want to know what the next step in their lives are. I don't know if she did this on purpose in order to leave a sense of mystery or because she wanted to write another novel with this character and then maybe wrap it up there. Either way, give us an epilogue. Like, we know what's going to happen, but just, just like share it with us. I want to read more about it. Like, I only gave it three stars and I have lots of critiques, but I still want to know what happened to this character who I now kind of invested in a little bit. Like, give me that epilogue, girl. So, um, I, I wanted to clarify one thing that I have seen people critique about that that's pretty much the the gist of my my review it was a meh it was okay it wasn't bad if you like outdoor adventure novels and want to throw a murderer in the mix you're gonna like it like you're gonna enjoy it maybe pick it up from your library if you're not willing to spend the money um my copy was ten dollars because it was my first time using book of the month so i didn't feel too bad if i like you know didn't love it and again i was on a mountain reading about a killer on the mountain but um, so people were critiquing the fact that this seemed like a copycat of the 14 Peaks documentary, which is like insane. Um, no. So the author actually summited Manaslu with the guy from 14 Peaks. The reason why that one little thing, that like one nugget, is in the book is because she experienced it so like we're kind of we're kind of doing a compliment sandwich here again going back to like how i like that she used her personal experience it's not a copycat there wasn't a murderer on 14 peaks it just has like that one same concept she took a concept she made a story out of it all authors do this it is it is not a copycat of that documentary, I assure you. Yes, you will see similarities because there are similarities in all mountaineering type documentaries, books, etc. So yeah, it's just, it's not. Anyway, that is going to wrap up my review of Breathless by Amy McCulloch. If it sounds interesting to you and you actually want to purchase it, hey, I don't think you're going to have a bad time reading it. Go to a mountain and read it. That might be fun. So if not, and you just want to check it out at your library, I don't think it's a waste of time. Just get past that first hundred pages. Get on your, uh, what is it called? Your second, second high, second high? No. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe, or maybe you don't. Anyway, I do recommend this kind of, sort of, but maybe if you're not too critical, 
that's my review. Uh, have a great day and let me know what you're reading down in the comments. If you have read Breathless or you have a book that is somewhat like this and oh my gosh, okay. This was a huge thing. Okay, if you've stuck around till now, I'm just gonna throw in this little piece of nugget. So what I was comparing this, this to in my mind, I was thinking like, okay, how could this be done in an adult way? I'm gonna, I'm gonna harp on that a little bit more. So I have The Revenant, I've read The Revenant, I've watched The Revenant, one of my most favorite adventure books of all time. And I do consider it kind of a thriller. You are scared throughout that entire book. It is a book about the human will to survive. And it is just this one guy, you don't have a huge, well, I mean, you do have some more characters, but like, you don't have this huge cast of characters. There's not a lot of social things. It's just the guy and the wilderness and like a few people that he meets along the way. But I feel like the, the themes and the elements that are in The Revenant, which I meant to grab and bring with me, um, it actually, the colors are kind of similar. If she would have taken those elements that make it so human, I'm really bad at this today. Um, if she could have taken some of the elements, some of the more adult elements that are in The Revenant and added it to this book, this would have been a classic, hands down. Um, that's where I think it fell short. That's what I thought of when I thought, what did I want this book to be more like? Um, maybe she didn't want it to be like The Revenant. Maybe she just wanted it to be a fun, easy thriller where you get to learn a little bit about mountaineering. And you know what? That's cool too. Not mad about it, but um, I just wanted to throw that nugget in there. Okay, now let me know if you have read Breathless and uh, just tell me what you're reading. Please give me suggestions for other books like this, uh, outdoor adventure books. There doesn't need to be a murderer involved. Again, I don't think there's a murderer in this book. We'll see. But um, I probably won't do a review on that because it's like way, it's it's kind of old and it's been, I'm sure it's been reviewed in teenth times. Um, if you're interested in a review on that, then sure I'll do it. But uh, yeah, just please give me, give me, I, I feel like I've been not let down, but I feel like I need more. So give me something that will give me more in the comments below please. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you have an amazing day and wow, this is 32 minutes. Good for you for sticking around. Uh, you, you are an endurance YouTube athlete. Alrighty. Have a good one. Bye.